Hello GearFacts friends, today I'm going to attempt something that I've never attempted before and that is to change the stereo on my Ford Focus 2013 to something a little more up to date. Let's do it. There are several videos on YouTube about this exact subject but I found I came into extreme trouble just on the very first step which was to get this plastic cover off underneath the main part of the fascia. So I wanted to show you in very close-up detail how I figured this out. You get an old credit card or a store card, something like that, and slot it in under there. It almost tilts right back towards you. And do the same on the other side. So it'll end up looking something like this. And the actual cover that we'll be taking out is this little part here. It sits something like this underneath and you'll see that there's a bit of a bar across the front there. If you put a little bit of paper over either side of that, just to avoid scratching it, and grab it with a pair of pliers, it will pop out. But it seems that it's much more easy if you do it with the help of these two levers. So like I said, all the other videos seem to gloss over this very important step, and I very nearly gave up. I'm glad I didn't, though, because the rest of it is pretty straightforward. The stereo itself is kind of rigidly in place. You have to sort of tease it out. At some stages it feels like you maybe are going to break something, but you're not. Because as you can see, the parts that hold it in don't have like a tooth edge. They're quite tapered, so it's designed to pop out just with a bit of force. Viewing directly from the front now, you'll see that it tilts forward. Things like the steering wheel will sort of catch on it as it goes but it sits fairly neatly in place. And now we're looking behind, not much light. Okay, that's better with a torch on it. You'll see that's the main cable there. Disconnect that one. This is also a bit fiddly. Sideways squeeze. Oh, and there it is. And that's all it takes to completely disconnect the entire fascia. And this is the new one I've got. It's got a nice big screen on it and a simplified control panel. And as you can see, it's a full fascia on its own. I think we will have to take some parts from the old one though, so that we've got all the little extra bits we might need for the knobs and vents. I've heard these aren't actually all that good, but I think it'll be an improvement over the one that was there. Like many stereos, this one comes with a bunch of adapters as well, because the actual stereo unit can fit in any car in theory but adapters will be needed, including this part here, which is the CAM bus, and that will allow me to use the paddle controls and the switch controls on the steering wheel. Or at least that's what I've read. With the new fascia face down now, you can see that the connection is exactly the same, so I'm expecting this to be pretty easy. Although I think I'm gonna need two hands. Looks like there are six screws involved in that process. These are torque screws, incidentally, the ones with the star-shaped tops. Personally, I like them. They grip really well, and you really know when you've got a handle on them. They don't burr. Okay, so that's the right-hand side. Bear in mind, this is an Australian Ford Focus, so the steering wheel, as you've no doubt noticed, is actually on the right. We drive on the left-hand side of the road here. I don't know why we do that. I think there's only about three or four countries in the world who do. I'm just a bit paranoid about these screws falling off and going down deep into that cavity there. So keep an eye on that. There we go, got him. A bit closer, hopefully giving you a better view. All right, that's just about out now. Yep. Now the radio is unsecured and it should slip out very easily. Okay. Aha, there we go. So sort of tilt it backwards like that and then pull it forwards. And then with a kind of a twisting motion, making sure not to scratch the dashboard, we should see all those sockets and things that we need. It should be just a case of swapping over all of those sockets. I notice there's a bit of heat at the back here though. I really should have had the power off in the car before I even started any of this. 
I had it on so that I could use the light inside the car, but there is actually in the packet a suggestion that you should disconnect the battery as well to minimize risk. But I'm feeling lucky. So I'm going to pull out everything that's connected to the original head unit. To get them off, squeeze that little square in on the back there. Ooh, that was a hard one. These are kind of similar to that first one that I removed a few moments ago. There's a squishy part there that you push in, and then the whole thing releases very easily. It's a good design. Okay, and with the release of that last big one, we have a completely freed up radio unit. Just a tip at this point, I've noticed that if you put the car in fourth, it sits perfectly balanced, so I can work very easily on these sockets. Actually, I was wrong. There is one more cable to come out, and it's the one that feeds into the old monochrome display. And it is giving me trouble. Yes, we've hit a real problem here. I cannot figure any way to get that cable out. What are we gonna do? Well, after a few minutes of trying, I'm getting nowhere with that. And it occurs to me that perhaps we don't even actually remove this bit. Let's try leaving it in. I guess the less we have to remove, the better. So it's going to be weird to have an illuminated screen back behind the new gear where you can't even see it. But right now, that's the only way I can see forward. Yeah, it seems like there's plenty of space for the new one to get in over the top of it. Okay, so now that that's back in place, let's start to do our connectors. Like this one, for example. This is the only right-sized cable for this socket. So one can only assume that that's correct. Not all of the sockets will need to be filled. This one, for example, is for a reversing camera. My car doesn't have a reversing camera. It's got an audible sensor for reversing, which I personally actually prefer. So I'm just gonna leave that one out. Just taking my time with it though, I'm starting to realize that there's only one place where everything can connect in with everything else here. And I've unraveled my adapters and it turns out it's actually all one part, all of these little connectors. Uh, connect dead. Nearly there. I'm pleased to notice that the screen has come on, so we're off to a good start. And I'm also getting some radio noise from the door speaker. Okay, I've just jumped over to the other side of the car now and got myself a better lamp. You can see that we've got the GPS antenna unit here. It's got a sticky patch on the other side. And up here, I think it's a pretty good place to stick that just inside that slot there. So here it is in situ. I'm just going to take the film off. And I think that looks really good. Notice anything missing though? Yep, that's right. We still need to get the ventilators and the dials that control those ventilators. And that means going back to the original fascia and removing them. So with a sigh, we take out the new unit again. And I've just accidentally turned my wipers on. So here's one of the ventilator conduits, I suppose you'd call it. And these little clips hold it in place. So just gently remove those, take that unit out. I should point out that there are clips on both sides of that little conduit piece. One of them's still attached. Oh, no, it's come off nice and easily. Clip those vents in exactly as they were on the original takes a little bit of precision, but it's nice that it's all one kind of cartridge unit. That's looking better. It feels very secure. I'm a bit surprised. Just checking out what our new system has to offer here. You can load GPS information. You will need a Wi-Fi connection to do that, and then you can use the GPS offline, but let's go to the home screen. Okay, music control, Bluetooth, etc. Touch response is really nice. There's a volume up. Okay, looking good. Lots of apps. Pretty much your classic Android system. I know it's very reflective and not quite as customizable perhaps as I'd like it to be. I also don't like the faux cosmetics. This circular control unit here is actually a total dummy. It's nothing. It's just decoration. Also, the CAN bus didn't quite work. I can access some of the controls from my steering wheel, but they're not really in their logical places. They're all kind of mixed up. The sound quality, I'd have to say, was probably three times better than the 
factory head unit that Ford supplies with the 2013 Ford Focus. Not exactly a new car now, but I'm sure some of you still own them and would be thinking about doing an upgrade. Thanks for watching Gear Facts today. I know we normally do music gear, but I thought you'd find this interesting. Like, comment, or subscribe. See you next time.